we're going to be making a video showing you how to coat a copper mesh um, to make a super hydrophobic and super oleophilic surface. So first we have tag to take our copper mesh here and cut it into a square that can cover a 15 millimeter tube. This tube is going to be used later on in the separation. So normally you want to get a 1 inch by 1 inch square approximately. Start by cutting our sample so it fits over the top of our tube. Now that we have our sample, we're going to take it and start our coating procedure. So the first step in our procedure is to coat the copper with nitric acid. The nitric acid is able to etch the surface of the copper, so we're able to make the copper buffer. So this is the smallest size mesh that we have, it's called 200 mesh. So for this size mesh, we coat it for 9 minutes in nitric acid. So as you can see here, we want to place our sample in the nitric acid and have the nitric acid only cover the sample slightly. So once we get our sample off of the tweezers, we start a timer for 9 minutes. We're going to focus on the solution and wait for the coating procedure to begin. After a couple of minutes, you'll see the solution begin to turn blue, and this is um, from the, um, the copper nitrate starting to form in the solution. So after a few minutes, as you can see here, our solution is starting to turn light blue. Um, because of the reaction between the nitric acid and the copper. One thing that you want to make sure to do, because the coating doesn't always occur evenly due to the reaction, just on occasion, you want to pick up the mesh and inspect it and make sure it doesn't look like it's decaying. After a while, if um, too much of the copper degrades, we won't have a functional mesh. So just every couple minutes, we want to be checking up on this until the 9 minute duration is up, just so we have a functional mesh for our experiment. So now as we're approaching the 9 minute mark, you can see the reaction that's occurring in the vessel um, is happening much more rapidly. And you can see the, the um, films coming off of the copper. So we're just wait another couple seconds until we hit 9 minutes and then we're going to remove the mesh. We're going to use our tweezers and just get a small corner of our mesh now that it's fully coated. The next step is we want to rinse it in water, just very gently, just to get off any excess nitric acid. And we can just dab it off. The water step is just a rinser. And then we're also going to rinse it in ethanol. And ethanol is um, what the HGT solution is made out of. It's mainly ethanol and a small, small amount of HGT. So we're just going to rinse it in ethanol. Um, before we're going to start our coating, we need to dry the mesh. So we're going to dry it with nitrogen or air. So we're going to dry our mesh. And just wait for it to become fully dry before starting our next step. Next, we're going to immediately submerge it in our HGT solution. And then we're just going to let it lay flat as we did the nitric acid step on the bottom and leave it in that solution for one hour. Okay, so now we're going to remove our mesh after the hour spent in the HGT solution. Yeah. And we're going to want to rinse it with water and ethanol again. Take our water, just a quick rinse, and then we want to submerge in the ethanol. Like I said before, the ethanol is the main constituent of the HDT solution, so just getting off the excess HDT. Take it out, our tweezers, and let's 
again, we can dry it with nitrogen. So we're just going to let our mesh dry with this tube. And so we can start the separation aspect. In the meantime, contact angles can also be measured on these pieces of mesh before doing the separation. So now we want to take our mesh and we want to actually start the separation. So we're going to take the piece of mesh that we just created In another part of the experiment, we're, like I said, we're going to be testing the contact angles to see that they're greater than 150 degrees, which is indicative of a super hydrophobic surface. Right now, we're just going to focus on doing the separation. So now that we have our dry piece of mesh, we want to wrap it around the top of our 15 milliliter tube and secure it with a rubber band. So the way we're going to do this is place it on top and you want to fully cover the top while making sure the mesh is flush with the top of the surface. So we want a flat layer to start our separation. So you can wrap around with your fingers and just secure it around like this. So you can see it's all bent around in the correct shape. And then once we've done this, we're going to secure it with a large rubber band. So maybe let's try a thinner one. Sometimes the step is a little tricky to get the band around. Sometimes this step takes a little bit of practice. It might take longer than the other step. Sometimes, once you have the rubber band on, it's useful to just use the tweezers to correctly position it. So what we don't want is for the rubber band to be directly on top of this, because we don't want any of our oil or water droplets to be pushed back into the mesh or be pushed back into the tube, because the rubber band is acting as a barricade. So I want to make sure it's along the edge, but it's not actually along the surface of the tube. Let's see, we'll pull this thing down a little more, and this looks good, and it's flesh along the top. So now that this is done, we want to clamp this into our setup. So here we have a 50 mil burette, and it's clamped in, and we want to then adjust this clamp down here to hold our two. So I put this in, this is at a slight angle. So we want to clamp at a slight angle so we can see whether our water and oil are going to roll off or not. So you want to position these about a half inch to an inch apart to have the dropping occur. So basically we're gonna add an oil and water mixture here and then drop the mixture across the top of the mesh. Because it's at an angle, we can get some sliding of the water off of there. So now that we have that, we're going to take our oil and water mixture, which we made before. We dyed the water blue so we can visually tell whether or not water is going to be passing through the top of the mesh. And that's a way to quantify and see how good our separation is. So once we have our blue water and our oil added, we're going to shake it up and then add a small amount to the top of the burette. Then we want to open the burette 
so the mixture is slowly dripping downwards. But at, normally we want a decently slow rate just so we can see the effects and so the fast effects aren't overcoming our surface effects. You can take it slowly like this. You can see our oil start to pass through the mesh, which is what we want because it's super oleophilic. Now you can see that our water is not passing through. It's a little too fast. We want to slow down our rate so it's dropping slowly. As you can see, the blue water is pulling on top, which is as expected. And then whatever rolls off is going to be caught by this um, plate down below. So as expected, the water is rolling off the top while the oil is passing through. As you can see, we've accumulated some oil in the bottom, and then as more oil comes and as more water passes through, the separation will continue. So now that a minute or two has passed, we can focus in and see that our blue water has all rolled off the top of the mesh, which is, shows its super hydrophobicity, while all of the oil has passed through. So as you can see, the bottom of the tube is filled with oil that's nearly completely clear, meaning that none of the oil, or none of the water passed through the mesh and only the oil went through. First, finishing off the last couple drops. So as you can see, even on the top, the blue water bubble is staying on top of the mesh while the oil continues to pass through. So now you can see that we've completed our experiment and completed the oil and water separation for the EAS 101 lab.